Did It's Hot in Topeka really just stick with anyone else who watched 2000s Cartoon Network, or was that just me? Literally everyone ever. Oh god, it's hot. My brain for the past 15 years. In Topeka. The term straight kind of implies every other sexuality is bent, and that's rude. No, but the other sexualities could be like twirled and shaped like stars, you know? Hey, what are you? Lopsided triangle, what about you? Dude, squiggly line! The opposite of imposter syndrome, or I do deceive my way into an industry and I enjoy it. Infiltrator syndrome. <laughs> you laugh, but those people are real. I don't want to live in a society. I want to sit in a test chamber and respond to stimuli. And get juice reward. And get juice reward. Lin-Manuel Miranda said in an interview that he wrote the song You're Welcome for Maui once he knew the character would be voiced by Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he thought that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be the one person on Earth who could sing something so egotistical and have us completely convinced we should be thanking him and honestly, he's not wrong. This just further proves my theory that he added in the Maui can do everything but float line, knowing that people will be making the pun about the reason floating is the only thing Maui can't do is because he's the rock! Hey, uh, sorry if this is stupid, but the Earth has, like, mountains and valleys and stuff, you know? So I don't see how it can be flat. If there's mountains and stuff, I'm, I'm sorry if it's stupid, I'm sorry. The New York Times, our animated dad's getting hotter. An investigation. All right, hold it. Anime dads have always been hot. These clowns were too slow to realize it. Why bully others when you can bully yourself? <laughs> Why is a dead wife so common as a backstory for male heroes when divorce exists and it's 10,000 times funnier? Ever since I lost my wife, I swore I would push myself to become the greatest hero this city has ever seen. Still not taking you back, Jared? Well, fuck you too, Stacy! With all the love you've gotten, how are you not evolving? I have an Everstout in my throat. The neurodivergent experience is talking about your brain as if it's a separate entity from yourself. Yeah, and it's a bastard. Dracula is trans. W what's your proof? Well, he doesn't live in Sylvania. <sighs> yeah, I can't argue with that logic. Can we please? Talk about the Google Scorpion emoji. Look at it. Dangerous babies. Mwah. Mwah, I accept it. DC Superhero Girls has given me many things. But by far, my favorite thing is that they had the best incarnation of Bruce Wayne. And I say that not as like, oh, this is 10,000% who Batman is. No. I mean that they have the best version of billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne. Better than even the movies have gotten for one sole reason. I want you to take a look at this bougie himbo. One fucking look. And tell me who in their right mind would believe that this man is the goddamn Batman. He's too pretty, too well put together, too big a himbo, too covered in fucking camera crews and groupies to ever pull it off. No one would even ever fucking consider this gem of a man could do it, but he does, and it works so fucking well. And oh my god, it's my new favorite thing. All right, Opie, your post was missing one crucial detail. This. Perfection. Hey, Mario, stop jumping to conclusions. Me. Yeah! Woohoo! Yahoo! Earth's boring, it's time to mix things up a little. After the year we just had? Politics bore me, but Yellowstone Super Volcano intrigues me. Let's do something with that. There are real teens out there who think discovering Nirvana is a special achievement. Isn't that kind of the whole point of Buddhism? <laughs> this post is slowly killing me. When you're the oldest in the squad and shower them with advice and affection. Hello, children! I am the fairy squad mother! Oh no, please help me, I'm melting in acid, Ubu! Why should I extend my mercy to you? Look at my new sweater! It's the cute, right? The salesperson said it was called Jazzberry Jam. H hey! Why are you smiling like that? What's so funny? Oh no! 
Oh no, it's a Pidgey. Oh my God, guys, I'm so screwed. I have nothing that could beat this. I have no choice but to use the greatest invention of all time, the Master Ball. Go. <laughs> speed test on Tumblr be like, High speed clown load, 100 silly bites per speed. Stewing in rage, stewing in agony. <sighs> Why don't you try stewing in some warm chicken lime broth with spices and vegetables? <gasps> oh, that sounds good. Before blaming others, think. What's the one constant in all your failed relationships? It's that cursed amulet. Why do you even have that? Get that, get that out of there. How to kiss a boy. Grab his waist, slip your hand in his pocket, steal his wallet. Don't even kiss him. Just run. Today I learned about the stoned ape theory. The idea that ingestion of psychedelic mushrooms was the evolutionary catalyst from which language, projective imagination, the arts, religion, philosophy, science, and all of human culture sprang. Oh damn it, I hate it when I'm an ape just eating mushrooms and then I eat the wrong one and I invent French. Sometimes I look back on my childhood memories and go, oh yeah, that was the ADHD. <laughs> You are not alone. There's bugs. Thanks, I hate it. I googled robot E and was not disappointed. He's trying! The tone difference in foraging guides between native plants and invasive plants is literally so funny to read. Terry, I'ma need some examples. All right, foraging guide entry on native plants. Make sure you only take a small amount from a well-established patch. Leave some for the wildlife and yourself next year. Please get involved in land restoration programs to protect this plant for the future. Foraging guide entry for Japanese knotweed. Rip, rip, tear, kill, rat, destroy. Eat, 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 No, Zelda was the scientist. That little guy smashing pots is Zelda's monster. Oh, you've heard of the gay agenda, but have you heard of the queer quest? The pan plan? The sapphic schedule? The asexual arrangement? The bi big idea? The closeted course of action? Or my personal favorite, the demisexual disposition? Aw oh, man, my vibe test came back negative. Six out of ten posts, the joke hits, but it's not that funny. What the fuck? Today on facts I just made up. Parrots can repeat nearly any phrase they're taught, but can't repeat most recent songs due to copyright issues. And that's why they need pirates. A Dark Souls-like game where the lore for the weapon gets less vague the more you upgrade it. The broken blade. A brittle sword. You can't seem to let it go. Unpolished blade. A cherished weapon from ages past. Polished blade. You remember something. Bride's blade. Your wife's sword. You know, at first I wanted to make this funny, but it just made me sad. Wife in the background. I'm still alive. Give that back. Honestly... It's probably for the best that what Pumpkin Studios crashed and burned is a video game developer. Can you imagine a world of sponsored YouTube videos where instead of the host banging on about RAID SHADOW LEGENDS, you just randomly get ambushed with, but first, let me tell you about Homestuck. Oh god damn it, the Fahrenheit defenders have logged on. My defense of Fahrenheit is that 69 degrees is ideal weather in Fahrenheit, but dead people weather in Celsius. Well, great news, everyone. I have decided to endorse Fahrenheit. When you make a great joke and even God approves of it. Hey! Hey! I can tell that I annoy some people. That they call me clingy, overexcited, or even just too happy to be around them. Like, it's fake. I won't lie. Some days, I do feel like I'm faking it. Because I'm afraid to upset people. I overthink. And I think about the day they'll be gone. <laughs> when I do, all I want to do is hold them and care for them. No matter how much I'm afraid they'll hate me for being too much for them. <laughs> and then I feel stupid because they'll never see that side of me, what my existence is, and they'll always feel right 
And when I reach that point, I go home to let out my feelings, where I feel like I can do that without being judged. And some days... I feel like it's easier to just stay home. So, since we got a lot of duplicate questions, I took the most frequently asked ones this time around for this video. So, ready, CC? Ready! <laughs> Alrighty, question number one. It says Sienna has based her physical form on someone on Earth. Who were they? Oh, Tanya! Oh gosh, she was this beautiful Earthling model many decades ago. Someone who is considered the plus-sized to what Earth considered a normal size for humans. And she was very proud of her looks, shape, and height. To me, she was the most beautiful human I ever saw in my life. I also honored her life by carrying on her last name. Sadly, she never had anyone else to give it to. She was so sweet. I wish I got the chance to meet her. Qu questions here before we cry from the get-go. <clears throat> what happens to Sienna during odd moon phases like blood moon, super moon, blue moon, etc.? Oh, well, it's kind of a drawback to having made a physical form. My mentor has a similar problem during particular phases where they cannot control their dragon form. I <laughs> cannot control my bunny form. <laughs> Cute for late corners of the wear bunny. She becomes extra fluffy. Shush! You know that nickname embarrasses me! Fine, fine, question three. Did Sienna really not know what a waifu was? <laughs> Listen! cannot keep up with all the May Mays you Earthlings have. I feel like every day something new comes out that I have to research and understand. Yeah, but that came out like eons ago. A show called Azamanga Dayo coined it. Azamanga what the now? <laughs> ne never mind. Question four. Oh god, this one. <sighs> is Sienna a space milf? What is the milf? Oh, wait, I know! The man I like frogs term! I have never seen a frog in space, but I do love the frogs on Earth! Hmm, <laughs> got him. Question five. Sianna can shapeshift. Is there a limit to what she can do? It's tricky. I can only really change my appearance, but not my height. So if someone asked me to shift into a cat, well, <laughs> I'd be a five foot two cat person thing. Before someone tells them us question six, what would happen if a werewolf was hugged or even touched by Sienna? Huh, you know, in all my years of living, I've never tried that. To be fair, it's not like a human would out themselves as a werewolf, and even then, most werewolves in cinema tend to look very mean, so I don't know if I could. Or if it was the werewolf from Van Helsing. <laughs> Hush, you! Question seven. Can Sienna go out in the rain? I can, although... <laughs> Grape and Asai have a hard time. <laughs> the moment they get hit with that water, Grape swells up and Asai becomes a long, wobbly noodle. <laughs> it's like those crazy things that you see in front of the... Um, the wobbly men, you know? Um, humans love them. They're always in front of, um, car dealerships, you know? <laughs> Let's move on to the last question before you bust a gut. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Final question. How does Siano stay so happy? Um, honestly, I have my rough days. And that's okay. Everyone has rough patches. It was much harder when I was by myself for so long. But to have all these wonderful people, Grape, Asai, Shiro, Kevin, my friends on Earth, they give me reasons to smile more. And that no matter how rough the days get, as long as I know people out there will be there for me, even if it's just a simple message, I feel better. I hope that helps in some sort of way. But, but, but before we go, there is one final request from a certain someone. Grape asked you to translate this voice message for him. Huh? Oh, sure. 
lean into the camera, and say the phrase, Arara? Wait! You both tricked me! Gotta go, everyone! Bye! <laughs>